Where are your papers? is a command that strikes at the core of freedom of movement and the right to privacy in a free society. Wow. How much more un-American can the American government get? Now, one of the principal achievements of this country in the past 20 years particularly, I think most people agree, is that gradual growth of social protective legislation based on the principle that we are our brother's keepers. How do you feel about the political trends of the United States, the uh, Western world? The way everybody feels except more consciously. I feel that it is terrible, that you see destruction all around you, and that you are moving toward disaster until and unless all those welfare state conceptions have been reversed and rejected. It is precisely these trends which are bringing the world to disaster because we are now moving towards complete collectivism or socialism, uh, a system under which everybody is enslaved to everybody. And we are moving that way only because of our altruist morality. Ah, yes, but you say everybody is enslaved to everybody. Yet this came about democratically, I, and the free people in a free country voted for this kind of government, wanted this kind of legislation. Do you object to the democratic process? I object to the idea that people have the right to vote on everything. The uh, traditional American system was a system based on the idea that majority will prevailed only in public or political affairs and that it was limited by inalienable individual rights. Oh. Therefore, I do not believe that a majority can vote a man's life or property or freedom away from him. And therefore, I do not believe that if a majority votes on any issue, that this makes the issue right. It doesn't. All right. Then how do we arrive at action? How should we arrive at action? By voluntary consent, voluntary cooperation of free men, unforced. And how do our leaders arrive? How do we arrive at our leadership? Who elects? Who appoints? Uh, the whole people elects. Uh, there is nothing wrong with the democratic process in politics. Uh, we arrive at it the way we arrived by the American Constitution as it used to be. By the constitutional process as we had it, uh, people elect officials, but the powers of those officials, the powers of government are strictly limited. They will have no right to initiate force or compulsion against any citizen, except a criminal. Uh, those who have initiated force will be punished by force, and that is the only proper function of government. What we would not permit is the government to initiate force against people who have hurt no one, who have not forced anyone. We would not give the government or the majority or any minority the right to take the life or the property of others. That was the original American system. When you say it, take the property of others, I imagine that you're talking now about taxes. Yes, I am. And you believe that there should be no right by the government to tax. You believe that there should be no such thing as welfare legislation, unemployment compensation, regulation during times of stress, certain kinds of rent controls and things like that. That's right. I'm opposed to all forms of controls. I am for an absolute laissez-faire, free, unregulated economy. Let me put it briefly. I'm for the separation of state and economics, just as we had separation of state and church, which led to peaceful coexistence among different religions after a period of religious wars, so the same applies to economics. If you separate the government from economics, if you do not regulate production and trade, you will have peaceful cooperation and harmony and justice among men. You are certainly enough of a political scientist to know that certain movements spring up in reaction to other movements. The labor movement, for instance, certain social welfare legislation. This did not spring full-blown from somebody's head, uh, I mean, out of a vacuum. This was a reaction to certain abuses that were going on. Isn't that true, Ayn? Uh, not always. It actually sprang up from the same source as the abuses. If by abuses you mean the legislation, which originally 
had been established to help industrialists, which was already a breach of complete free enterprise. If then, in reaction, uh, labor leaders get together to initiate legislation to help labor, that is only acting on the same principle, namely all parties agreeing that it is proper for the state to legislate in favor of one economic group or another. But what I'm saying is that nobody should have the right, neither employers nor employees, to use state compulsion and force. But when you, advocate, when you advocate completely unregulated economic life in which every man works for his own profit, you are asking, in a sense, for a, a devil-take-the-hindmost, dog-eat-dog society, and one of the main reasons for the growth of government controls was to fight the robber barons, to fight laissez-faire, in which the very people whom you admire the most, Ayn, the, the hard-headed industrialists, the successful men, uh, perverted the use of their power. Is that not true? No, it isn't. No. Uh, this country was made not by robber barons, but by independent men, by industrialists who succeeded on sheer ability. And Which having, by of course ability, I mean without political force, help, or compulsion. But at the same time, there were men, industrialists, who did use government power as a club to help them against competitors. They uh, were the original collectivists. Today, uh, the liberals believe that that same compulsion should be used against the industrialists for the sake of workers. But the basic principle there is, should there be any compulsion? And the regulations are creating robber barons. They are creating capitalists with government help, which is the worst of all economic phenomenon. Where are your papers is a command that strikes at the core of freedom of movement and the right to privacy in a free society. Wow. How much more un-American can the American government get? Something even the British government rejected in the past 10 years. We're meeting with the president in order to formulate legislation that would require every person in the United States of America who is employed to carry a biometric identification card with them. Anyway, it's great to see you, Randy. You were in Florida the last time I spoke to you, and I thought you were going to take care of business down there. I tried. Are you done counting votes? No, no, no. Listen, the uh, politics is a team sport, and, you know, it was a tough night, I think, for everybody. Hopefully, though, everybody's getting over their mourning period. I You know, there, a big furor erupted, and, and now the Republican sponsor over in the House who introduced this provision said, I didn't mean it, and it was a mistake. But, you know, part of the thing that it raises, though, is when you rush these budgets that are a foot high, and nobody has any idea what's in them, and nobody's read them. Fourteen pounds it was. Yeah, uh, and it's, it gets rushed through without any clear deliberation or debate. Uh, then these kinds of things happen. And I think that this is, in some ways, what happened to the Patriot Act. I mean, you remember, there was no real debate about that. It was so quick, uh, quick after 9-11 that it was introduced mm -hmm. that people felt very intimidated by the administration. And a few things that I feel like I've picked up from these guys. Number one is that they are very aware. Rahm Emanuel's chief of staff had experience in the Clinton White House. And, he, and he's trying to learn every lesson from those days of Clinton and apply it to Obama. So number one is don't just deal with one big issue. One of the reasons why, for instance, they thought health care went down is you had one issue sitting out there when Hillary Clinton introduced it. We all focused on it in the media and the opposition got to organize and stop it. And you can kill anything in this town if you give it long enough, uh, if, you, if you set an idea out here long enough and give the opposition time to organize and stop something. And I don't care which side of the aisle you're on. You can kill anything in Washington doing that. And I think they're attacking it this way, saying we're going to push three or four different things uh, because they believe the opposition won't have time to unite and kill all of it. And I think that this is in some ways what happened to the Patriot Act. I mean, you remember there was no real debate about that. It was so quick, uh, quick after 9-11 that it was introduced mm -hmm. 